sick. That was really cool. <laughs> Hang on. Sweet. How are we all doing? For those of you who don't know me, my name is Russ. I'm the director of the Circus Freaks. I'm a performer with them. Uh, I teach a bit of clown, and, and here tonight I'm your host and MC, which is to say I, I wear a lot of hats. Um, I see what oh, shit. I didn't even think about it. I just, I, I just didn't want to be cold when I talked about it. I talk about a lot of stuff. What, what my job really is, for you, for you people who don't know, my, my job is to introduce, mechanically, is to introduce the acts. I say, this person, and you guys cheer, and then we enjoy that. What the hope is, is that I give you a, a new context, a new way to look at them. Uh, and I do this by, well, I run my mouth a little bit. I talk about, um, I talk about our successes as, as a family and a community. I talk about what I do as a performer. Sometimes I talk about my screw-ups, and when it goes badly, it's a teaching moment. When it goes really badly, it's a source of great comedy. I suppose your welcome is in order. What I don't talk about often is quitting. I don't talk about it often because um, I like to, and this is the moment, right? Everybody's like, <gasps> This is the moment where, yeah, this is the moment where everybody goes, well, of course not. You're a big freaking superhero and never freaking say that. <clears throat> you don't know me that well. I, uh, I used to, when, when this hat got handed to me and all of this crap became my, my issue, uh, I used to say it all the time. I very dramatically and emphatically go, oh, to hell with it, I quit. I, just, oh, I can't take it, I quit. It's too much pressure, I quit. And a friend of mine, he came along and uh, he sat me down. He says, look, I'm going to walk into a burning building with you. I am, I am going to kneel down and crawl across broken glass and come out the other side of the burning building, but I need you to do something for me. Thinking he was really good at exaggeration, I said, well, what's that? He said, I need you to stop saying you're going to quit because I need to know that on the other side, the reason I decided to walk into a burning building is still there. <sighs> he got to me. He did. He got in my head, and I hadn't said it for a really really long time. It was, it, was a, it was a strong, powerful thing. In fact, the irony is he later quit. Well, he didn't quit. He, uh, he went on to chase his dreams. You know, this is me doing my dream. This is, that was him chasing his, and I'm, I'm happy to report that he's had a lot of success there. Um, the problem is I still had this promise I kept, and it was like just always there. Well, I don't have to tell you guys, this year has been kind of a meat grinder for a lot of people. It's been a tough year. I like to, I like to pretend it hasn't. I like to... You guys are bored with that already. The truth is it's been a tough year and we got through it together and I'm really grateful for that. Especially as we hit the close of it, I, I see you know, we're, almost, we're almost through it. Last week I had a really rough day. I had one of those days where everybody on the phone is you know, yelling at me. And uh, the to-do list piled up so high I had to make a to-do list, which included the item, deal with the other to-do list. And it got really, really to the point of just one more thing, and I snapped, just like that. Now, I remember the moment I snapped. I was walking uh, to our rehearsal space down this long hallway, and I'm pushing a, this giant cart full of gear that had nothing to do with me. Nothing at all. I was helping someone. And the, the thing was piled up to here, and it decided to <laughs> fall over. So I ran forward. Threw my hands up against it with all I had, and um, I felt something in my back go, Fuck you! <laughs> and I knew immediately that uh, it was going to suck later, even though I didn't feel it too much just then, and boy, did it. Uh, at this point, I turned, I picked my foot up, and out of my mouth popped, kind of involuntarily, I quit. Huh. Fuck you. <laughs> I just kept walking, and I thought that was a great moral victory. I had said, fuck you, and kept going. I thought it was a great idea, and I thought I had, I had grown up as a person. But what I did was I, I left a piece of me behind, the part of me capable of quitting. <laughs> the problem is you then spend the rest of your year finding ways to fill that back up. And that's pressure in and of itself. And the pressure got bigger and bigger and bigger. And, and last week, I found myself in that exact same place, just pressured to the end. And uh, I... I've been finding myself walking to that rehearsal space over and over. I walk there, and um, 
I have to walk by the ghost of me saying, I quit, over and over, and that's, that's tough. Well, I got to the gym, I dropped off everything, I said, guys, I gotta go for a walk, I'm sorry, I gotta clear my head. So I went for a walk, tried to clear my head, and I come walking around the corner, and I find myself back at the spot where I said it. And standing there was one of my performing partners. And he looked at me, and he, and he, he very proudly looked at me, and he said, I'm here to provide emotional support. That's good. <laughs> and he didn't really, I don't think he really knew what to say. Hell, I didn't know what to say. And he said this to me. He said, you know, we've got this on lock. And I looked at him like, uh-huh, my to-do list, my this, my We've, all of us have this on lock. It's going to be awesome. He said, you're just sitting in the seat where you can see it all. Well, that got to me. And I went back, and I very kind of gently started providing a little direction for some people and rode a unicycle for a little while. And before I knew it, I found my rhythm. That's rhythm for me, ride a unicycle. You know, that's, that's all we stupid people like me, we do a stupid human trick. Oh, I feel normal again. But I got back to it, and I realized I'm pretty sure, I'm honestly sure at the core of my being that I would have gotten through all of that and gotten back here to say this story to you, I gotta tell you the truth. Long as I've been doing this, there's one thing I've become completely aware of. I am really glad I didn't have to find out whether or not I could talk myself out of that trap. I'm really, really grateful to be surrounded by so many creative people, so many amazing, brilliant people who make me never want to say that. And when I get to the point where I'm like, ooh, they say, we've got this. And that means, take a deep breath. TJ tells me, take another deep breath. I take about four more, I go back to work. And that's the moment I get to look at all of you and say thanks and welcome to the open stage. Yeah.